Welcome to the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Our mission is to educate the people of New Mexico and our visitors from around the world in the history, science, and technology of space. In this segment, we look at the Daisy Track, a device that contributed significantly to man's drive to conquer space. With jets coming into wide use, the Air Force and Navy needed to know what happens when a human body, traveling at a great speed, is suddenly decelerated. How much can we ask of young military pilots, and how can we protect them? Early research centered at Holloman Air Force Base outside Alamogordo, New Mexico, under the leadership of Dr. John Paul Stapp, a medical doctor and Air Force flight surgeon. Stapp's studies initially focused on how blunt force trauma affected a pilot ejecting from high-speed jets into air moving past at hundreds of miles per hour. Sudden decelerations and stops are devastating to a body. Humans in daily life normally experience 1G downward. At just 2Gs in a sudden stop, such as in an auto accident, the body's organs weigh twice as much. The faster the sudden stop, the heavier the organs become and the greater the damage, and even death will occur. And to test at jet speeds, the Air Force used rocket sleds. Stapp himself was his first human test subject. By the time the Daisy Track was operational, he had ridden rocket sleds at the Holloman Test Track 29 times. Stapp's most dramatic experience was on December the 10th, 1954, on Sonic Wind 1. Rocket engines accelerated him from zero to 632 miles per hour in only 4.4 seconds. The sled then hit a water break, slamming him to a dead stop in just two seconds. If you've ever done a belly flop in a pool, you know how abruptly water can stop you. Stapp endured 43 Gs, or 43 times the force of gravity, and he temporarily lost his sight when his eyes' blood vessels burst. Stapp's restraints saved his life and he soon undertook a successful campaign to have auto manufacturers put seat belts in every vehicle produced. Time Magazine declared him the fastest man on Earth. But rockets are expensive and time-consuming. Stapp proposed the Daisy Track in 1953 as a low-cost alternative to rocket sleds. It was tested with ejection seat charges for the first time in September 1955. Air propulsion was added in mid-1960. Unlike rocket sleds, the Daisy Track was air-powered, which cost only five cents per test. Stapp named the device after the Daisy rifle, which uses compressed air to propel a pellet. It's the type of rifle that Ralphie wanted in the 1983 movie, A Christmas Story. On the Daisy Track, a pneumatic piston compressed air to more than 40 times outside air pressure. Once released, the air instantly and forcefully shoved the sled and rider down the track to the water break, where the rider experienced up to 43 Gs on deceleration. The track itself was only 110 feet long until in the early 1960s, the Air Force extended it to 240 feet, allowing runs hitting more than 100 miles per hour. Another important difference in the Daisy track was that test subjects could ride at different angles, sitting upright, sideways, facing back, or feet or head first. Pilots call these positions eyeballs in or eyeballs up, depending on which way you are riding. Test subjects had to undergo extensive physical checks and then were wired up to monitor heart and brain function. Finally, they drank a four ounce barium cocktail for stomach x-rays before and after the test. Test subjects fared better when riding backward and their backs are cushioned. But pilots can't fly that way. The most severe stop occurred to Dr. Eli Beeding, whose body went into shock after he endured 83 Gs for an instant. It was his 335th ride on the Daisy Track, and Beeding quickly recovered. Stapp even rode the Daisy Track three times. Other riders were Air Force volunteers who earned hazardous duty pay, as well as 200-pound anthropomorphic dummies with nicknames such as Rapid Robert. NASA used brown bears as human stand-ins to find the best cushioning material for Apollo astronauts at splashdown or in case of a launch abort. In more than 5,000 runs using a water brake and then 4,500 runs using an air brake, 
the track experienced no failures. The Daisy Track was used into the 1980s. In 1987, the New Mexico Museum of Space History rescued it from salvage and put it on display. Thanks for watching and participating in this fun video produced by the Education Department at the New Mexico Museum of Space History. We hope one day you have the opportunity to come visit us in Alamogordo, New Mexico. And be sure to check out our website at nmspacemuseum.org.